A couple of videos ago when we were talking about the Visual Composer we created this action box here on the start page of our WordPress website. We noticed back then that the font is a bit too small for a proper action box, especially of a WordPress website like this. Even if we make the website smaller, it would still not look big enough. So let's now take care of the font size here and even of the font later on. How do we do this? Of course, with an amazing plugin. Well, actually, I also want to quickly show you uh, what is the standard way without a plugin to actually get, um, yeah, to change the size of such font. We would have to go to the appearance section and then the editor. And here we have direct access to the CSS styles of our WordPress website. So all we had to do is to target a certain class and then give it a custom style. Of course, for this, you have to be very good familiar with the stylesheet language, the CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, uh, which takes care of all of the styling of our website. And uh, yeah, I understand that this is a little bit too much for some of you. Whether or not you're familiar with CSS, there's a very convenient way to access the styles and to change the appearance of the font, for example. Like always, we go to the plugin section and then click on Add New to add a new plugin. And the plugin that we use for our purpose here now is called Easy Google Fonts. We search for it and then we get this Easy Fo Google Fonts plugin here. And we first have to install it and we activate it. And here we go. The setting is a little bit hidden. It's You don't get a new menu item here but if you go under settings you have this Google fonts menu item. Now here with a lot of other content types we can just create new font controls. So what is a font control? As the name implies it's a little bit of a thing that lets us take control over a certain font and this is also using CSS. But you don't have to be too familiar with CSS. I will show you in a second how to do it. Um, let's first create one font control for our action box. And actually, if we go back to our page, we have two elements of our action box that we want to control over. This is first the headline of it. It should be a different font size as it is right now already than this paragraph underneath. So. There is actually a way to find out what kind of elements these are. I just said headline, I just said paragraph. Why do I know this from? Uh, if you're using Google Chrome as a browser, you can just right click on that element or on any element and say inspect element. And then we can see this is an H2 font. And uh, the second part is a paragraph. So this is quite important to know because only if we know what type these elements are, we can control them. They're all wrapped in two div containers, one larger one and one smaller one, and inside there is this h2 and the p. Now this is all we have to know, and the way we are going to do it is to create two independent Google font controls for each of these elements. So the first one, I call it home action box but this is not too important this is just the name and I call it h2 just to remind myself later on what this Google font control is taking care of so I create it and I will create another one and this one is also called home minus action box and then p because this one will take care of the paragraph I create this font control and in the next step we go to our home page in the back end and actually have a look at the action box itself first. So here we go, get on board and then we click on the pen icon here and here are all the settings that we implemented earlier on. And here in the very bottom you have this field is called extra class name. So we can give this container, this entire container that we saw here, this entire container where all the other elements are in there, we can give it 
an extra class name to target it later on for any purpose. So we call it home minus action box. You can call it whatever you want, it's just important that we are consistent later on when we target the certain elements through the Google Font Control. So here, just the name is important. You don't have to put any dot or anything before that. Click on Save and update the page. And now if we also update our homepage here from the front end and then click on Inspect Element, for example, for the H2. And then the overall container carries the new class name that we just implemented, Home minus Action Box. Now to target a certain element inside this container or in any other children container, we have to write home minus action box h2 or home minus action box p. I show you how to do it. We go to our settings of the Google fonts again and here where we are in the home minus action box h2, we have to add CSS selectors that we want to target exactly with this Google font control. So with this one we want to target home minus action box h2 and then you just click on tab. You could add more styles to it or more elements that you want to target with the exact same selector but this is not what we want to do. Imagine we would put both of these um, selectors in the p and the h2. In that case both of these would get the same font size later on and this is not what we want and actually I made one little mistake here and one very important mistake actually and uh, it's actually good that I made it because I can show you the importance of it. In this case I put a dot in front of it if you can see it and this makes such a difference because this selector is not like the control name just a name a definition it's the class that we call and we want to target exactly the dot home minus action box class. Um, here is of course no dot before it but it says class and it's a class name and if you're just a little bit familiar with CSS then you know in CSS there are IDs and classes and because this is a class we define it with a dot before that and IDs with the hashtag. Now dot home minus action box and then space h2 that means any h2 that is contained directly or in a child container of the home minus action box div. Then we save the font control and we do the exact same for the paragraph inside the home minus action box. We write class home minus action box and then the p in there. We tab it and say save font control. We also have the option here to override any of the styles that would put an exclamation mark important behind it and we could do it let's just do it to make sure because sometimes it could happen that in any other setting in any other style sheet our settings would be overwritten by something else in this case if we check this override the four style override we make sure that our settings will not be overwritten by any other setting somewhere else okay so what happens now we have the font control how do we actually change the appearance of the font and how do we change the font size, the color and the line height and anything that is related to the fonts? Well, for that purpose we have to go to Appearance and then Customize. And here we go, we have a home page and on the left this quite familiar um, customize menu um, that comes with most of the WordPress themes and in some themes you have more options and in some themes you have less. In any case when you have installed Google Font Control and I think even if you don't you have this typography tab here or menu item. And if you click on there you usually just have this default typography and uh, yeah you can uh, change all paragraphs, the style of all paragraphs in the theme, the style of all H1 and H2 and so on. So for example if we would go to H2 this would be a couple of elements on our website and we go here and change the font size. At the moment it's a, a certain size, I don't know, and you see one H2 is reacting to it but for example this one, this is actually also H2 as we saw earlier, is not reacting to it. So this is a bit of inconsistent 
uh, and makes it sometimes a little bit of annoying and difficult to to take control over the um, over the certain fonts. And because this would be too general, because we don't want all H2 on the website to be the same size, maybe. And uh, yeah, we have our customized typo uh, typography tab here. This is the theme typography, and it comes with the Google fonts that we created. And here we have the home minus action box H2 and the home minus action box P. And through both of these elements, we now have complete control over almost all attributes of these two um, elements here. So let's start with the H2. Um, the first one will be styles. Uh, it's all about the font family and uh, a script subset. So you can say whether it should be Latin, Arabic even, and uh, any kind of these uh, yeah, complicated and quite flexible things. And you, you change the font family. Let's, for example, change the font family to Roboto. The nice thing, because it is a plugin from Google, you have access to all of the Google fonts that are available. So, for example, you could just change the font of this H2 element, but only of this exact same H2 element to Roboto. And uh, we could change the font style or the font weight. Now we can make it italic, we can make it very bold, for example. Uh, I maybe go for 300. And uh, yeah, we could make it uppercase. At the moment it is already uppercase, but we could force it to be lowercase without even touching um, the code itself anymore. And uh, yeah, we could also just have it uh, capitalized, which is basically almost the same as um, uppercase, but it is uppercase. We've, write, we've wrote it uppercase, so we cannot just capitalize it as meaning the first letter to be capitalized. And uh, yeah, we can also just leave it as none because it is already uppercase. Uh, also, we could add a text decoration and stuff. So this is quite cool already. And uh, let's go now to the appearance tab. This is becoming even better now. And this is exactly where we wanted to change our settings. Um, Earlier we defined already that it's a white font. We could change it to, to be any other color that we wanted. We could put a hexa code in here or we could just leave it as white and we can even apply a background color to just this H2 uh, element which is of course a bit weird if, um, if only this little row would be one color. So let's get rid of that and here we can just easily and very smoothly change the font color of this exact uh, H2 element. So this is quite cool. We can also change the line height yeah, and make a kind of a margin underneath it. Uh, it. At least it's the same effect. And the letter spacing between the letters itself as well. This is very, very cool. So I go for 40 pixels as the font size. And then we even have some more positioning uh, settings here. So, for example, you could actually change the margin at the bottom and uh, define a spacing to the next paragraph. Yeah, this is cool as well. We can make a margin left and right. This is also amazing and very, very flexible. And the same goes for the padding. And uh, we could create a border. And make a border width to it. Um, is it working now? If we make it a solid border, yes, it's working. We can make a border top and bottom which is solid and give it a certain uh, width and um, also color here. So this is super, super cool, I think. And uh, yeah, we actually don't want to have any borders here. I, it was just a demonstration. And uh, same goes for border radius and display block or inline block. Very, very cool. Let's leave it as it is now. And uh, let's also change the size a little bit of the paragraph here. So we give it a little bit of, how about 25 looks good, I think. And um, I also want to give it Roboto as a font family. And maybe also just a hundred as font weight. Looks cool. We click on save and publish. And if we then reload our page, 
and get rid of this customized tab here and just visit our website we see that the settings are saved they're fixed in the website and it looks much more brilliant